Hi, this is Chris Jobling uh, with uh, Return to Canonical Forms. So, uh, what I want to do is in this pre session is to introduce what I'm going to talk about in, in the session on Friday, it will be. So, here's the Canonical Forms. This is what we were talking about last time. This is what we covered last time. We talked about the companion form and gave some examples of its use for systems with no derivatives in the numerator and for proper and strictly proper systems. Um, so in this session we are going to continue by looking at other canonical forms that you might come across such as controller canonical, absorber canonical, normal form and Jordan forms. And again we will illustrate these in the class with some examples and work solutions. So let's start off with the controller canonical form and just as a justification for this, I'm going to use um, an example from an older version of MATLAB that used, to, but MATLAB still works this way if you use this form of definition. So in the old MATLAB, you used to have numerator equals uh, a, a polynomial, denominator is another polynomial, and then we'd say ABCD is equal to transfer function two state space of numerator denominator, and that would return this this structure as a result. It looks similar to the companion form in that the coefficients, it is a companion form, in, in that the coefficients match up across the, uh, the transfer function. And you can see the uh, coefficients appearing in the, in the various matrices, but they're, they're in different places. Uh, the numerator is no longer in the B matrix, for example, it's in the Y matrix. Oh, it was in the Y matrix, I think, in the previous one, actually. So I forget what I said. But the, the coefficients are in slightly different places. The order is slightly different. Um, and I wanted to explain what this form was um, in the lecture. If you, as an aside, if you use proper current version of MATLAB and you sh define your state space models using the transfer function of LTI blocks, you get a slightly different result to this. But uh, the principle is the same. So what is this form? This form is, how do we get to, to it? Well, if we look at the companion form, this is what we had last time. Notice we have this basically empty matrix, apart from these ones on the off diagonal. And then we've got the coefficients of the uh, original transfer function in ascending order of the suffix. And similarly for the uh, numerator coefficients in ascend ascending order order of the suffix as well and there we have the, the B matrix just a one in it so that's a companion form if we were to reorder this so renumber the state so instead of going from x1 to xn we, we went from xn to x1 um, these would swap around so the order would, would change we'd go be now ascending powers And then if we put that into the right form again, so xn, x1 dot is x2 and so on, then this is the form we get. And notice the change of the order of the coefficients of both the numerator and denominator. And this particular form is called the controller canonical form. It's the form that MATLAB give you for that tf to ss um, transformation. And it's useful for looking at controllability and for designing state feedback, as we will see in a later lecture. This is what it looks like as a block diagram. Um, it's, it is slightly different. You'll notice that now the states are feeding off in a slightly different order from what they were before uh, in order to produce the, the result that we, we, we're getting for this particular model. Um, there's also what's called an observer canonical form, which is basically the dual of the control canonical form, and it's obtained by essentially transposing the matrices, the B, Y, and um, reordering the matrices. So now in the observer canonical form, we've got the coefficients running in descending powers along the first column, um, and then the Y matrix has become 1, 0, and the B matrix where all the Bs are now located. And that block diagram will look like this, slightly different in structure as you can see. The Bs are coming in to the uh, transfer functions rather than going out. 
And this particular form is useful for designing observers. So if you don't know what, if you don't have a model of a real physical model and measure the states, if you can measure the output, you can reconstruct the states by using an observer. And the observer canonical form is the best structure for designing one of those. So as an example, in the class we will look at uh, this form that we looked at last time and we'll show that it has this companion form and we want you to derive the control canonical and observer canonical forms from that. So we'll quickly do that example in class uh, when we get to it. This is the example in MATLAB. We're using the transfer function blocks now. So we're taking the numerator denominator, defining a transfer function and then converting that into a state space model. We're then converting that, getting the A, B, C, D matrices out. And those, those should be in control of canonical form. If we want the uh, observer canonical form, we take the transpose of the A, C and B matrices and create another state space model from that. And that would be for the observer canonical form. The com companion form is slightly trickier. Uh, we need to uh, basically take the A matrix, reorder the states, so we, we change the index essentially by doing these operations in MATLAB, and then that gives us the companion form. But all forms represent the same transfer function, as you'll see if you do these commands, if you take GCF, GCC and GOC, and just produce a transfer function from them, uh, G1, G2 and G3 should all be the same. So those are the uh, some canonical forms. Another useful one, um, which makes de de deriving the system response easiest, is what's called the normal canonical form. And this basically takes advantage of ideas of eigenvalues and uh, pole values. So if we take a simple model of a single pole, R i over s plus minus p i. And this is how we would represent that as a differential equation, first order differential equation or one integrator in the block. The p would be in the feedback loop um, and the i r i would be in the input and there'd be one on the output. And this format is the form you'd get if you expanded your um, transfer function into partial fractions, providing there were no repeated roots or complex roots. So ri over s minus pi, that's what the residue format that you get when you when you form a partial fraction expansion. So this is one term in a partial fraction expansion for a transfer function. So if we took that um, to for all the poles, each pole would have a little block diagram like like the one I showed previously. And so each of these is the residue of the partial fraction expansion. These are the poles coming in the feedback, uh, this is the direct connection that there might be for a proper system, and then the summa summation of all the outputs of all these systems together produces the output Y that is a result of this system. Now the benefit of this structure is that it makes it very easy to, uh, to generate the system response. To see why it's so easy, if you put the state space together you can see what it ends up is, is a state space matrix where the A matrix has all the poles on the diagonal and is zero everywhere else. So these are the residues in, in the R matrix and then uh, on the Y matrix we're just summing together all of those uh, states uh, and so the coefficient is one in each case. Um, as we'll see later these poles also correspond to the eigenvalues of the matrix, so in fact the p's and the eigenvalues of the A matrix are the same thing. In this structure, which this one is called the normal observable canonical state space model, it's very, very easy to produce the output response. Um, if we want to rearrange things slightly, we can have the controllable canonical state space model where we have ones in the B matrix and the, um, the Y matrix ends up having all the residues of partial fraction expansion in it. Which one you choose again depends on which what you want to do with the result. But given the structure in this form, if we take that equation that we had on a couple of slides ago and the plus transform it, then the derivative of x1 will become sx1 
minus x1 naught, and then we'll have the pole times x1 plus the res residue times u. So this is going to be s minus p x1 s is equal x1 naught plus r1 times u of s. So the output of the state response is the initial condition divided by s minus p1 uh, plus the r1 times s minus p1 times u. This term here is just a simple uh, exponential decay with a gain equal to the initial condition. This one is slightly more complicated. It requires us to do convolution to determine the response of this component to an input that we need to specify. If we take inverse Laplace transforms of that, then we end up with this equation here. So x1 is x1 one, uh, naught, the initial condition of x1 times e to the p1t and then we've got r1 times the integral between 0 of t of u of tau e to the p1 t minus tau d tau which is a convolution integral representing the, the response of this system here and that would then be repeated for all the other states in the uh, system so the system response then is simply the sum of x1 x2 x3 and so on plus d times the input if there's any direct connection so we end up with f any, any first order equations with some integrals we need to solve but these are relatively easy to solve uh, and we end up with this structure here so these are all initial conditions here these are the convolutions due to the input and this is the, 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 the direct connection from input to output uh, so, but it's very easy to actually compute the, the response, much easier than the method I showed in the, the lecture last week where we did it by, by doing the transfer function and inverting that. So that's a useful result and we'll, we'll, make, we'll exploit that in a later lecture when we look at the computing system responses from directly from the state space model itself. Uh, just a couple of other things to, that are covered in the notes but perhaps won't be covered in detail in the lectures. Uh, it is possible to have systems re with repeated poles and we need to deal with those specifically in a special way and also systems with complex poles may, may crop up and they, they need to be dealt with slightly differently as well. So for example for a, for a system with repeated poles we would have this kind of structure and this is a, just an ordinary P, this is the repeated P and then we've got a diff taking off a connection here and that uh, gives us a slightly different structure to our state space model that we need to introduce um, details given in the notes of that and uh, there's a similar sort of trick you need to do for complex poles and uh, neither of these things will be examined in the lecture so I'm presenting them here as something extra to of interest for, for later but those block forms, those special forms that have a slightly different structure are called Jordan forms. And so that's basically what we needed to cover today. So this is the end of the pre-class presentation. Uh, in the class we'll actually look at some examples of those controllable observable forms. We'll look at the normal form and give an example uh, possibly. And then we'll look at the time response normal form um, and the Jordan forms. So. Thanks for watching again, and we'll see you in the class uh, on Friday. And uh, hopefully, that's, that will be will fill in some of the questions you might have about this presentation. So, see you there. Thanks.